Hey guys, this is Dan from LearningCameras.com and I just wanted to go over with you uh, the new Nikon D7100 was just announced and really looks like a phenomenal camera and I just want to go with you a little bit into what you'd be getting with this camera. We're going to definitely get our hands on with this camera because it looks like it's going to be great. Uh, also, I want to go a little bit beyond some of the basic specs that you'll see into some of the functionality of the camera and how it might affect you. A lot of things in this camera are being pulled from a bunch of uh, different cameras and so uh, having experience with those cameras will let you know uh, exactly how it will function. So basically we're dealing with a, a brand new 24 megapixel camera. That's a lot of pixels on, uh, on uh, this type of an APC sensor, but we've seen this on the on the Nikon D5200 and the results have been great so far. Uh, we're definitely going to be looking at low light as good or better than the D7000 which was as good or better than virtually any other uh, crop sensor camera on the market. So I, I definitely think we'll be looking at great results on the low light especially considering that many pixels on the sensor. We're still going to be dealing with great results. Uh, always Nikon has had great dynamic range even in this set, you won't get quite as much as a full frame sensor, but uh, some great features in this as well. Uh, we're still going to be looking at about 100 to 6400 ISO range. You will have a high one and a high two. Uh, you're probably not going to want to explore those in this type of camera, but they are available to you in that. We do have that availability also on the D600. Uh, you know, high one was pushing it for that camera, so I really think that 6400 is, is going to be the max you'd want to go on this. Given that the D600 is a full frame camera, both are 24 megapixels, we're probably going to be seeing a little uh, less ability in low light than that camera. Um, as far as movie mode goes, we do have an upgrade from the D7000. You do now get 30 frames a second at 1080p. Uh, you get 60 frames a second at 720p for those of you who like fast frame rate or like the slow down slow motion footage that'll be good for you you know nothing stunning nothing new um, this is all stuff that Canon and Sony and every other manufacturer have done in fact Sony can do 60 frames a second on some of their new cameras so nothing really as outstanding from this now one thing that's new uh, that that Nikon does have a crop mode in this and uh, we've seen this on some of their other cameras like the D800 this crop mode uh, is a 1.3x crop it can be combined again That'll make your lenses, uh, make a 50 millimeter lens up to a 100 millimeter lens if you go that route and uh, will essentially make it a four thirds camera. But doing that will open up a new video mode. It's 1080p at 60i if you would like to shoot there, but 30p should be fine for most people. Uh, also, we do have a built in stereo mic, six frames per second shooting, get the built in flash. Uh, now this is big, 100% viewfinder coverage. This is big to see on a camera that's only uh, $1,200. Not every camera in this range gets it for sure. Uh, we do see it on the D600, but some of the Canon cameras do not have that ability, for example. Now here's a big one. This is weather sealed completely up to the Nikon D800 levels. That is big for a camera like this, uh, especially given the price point that Nikon is entering this in. This is a heavy duty camera at a relatively low price. I expect this to be a nice upgrade uh, from the D5100 or even the D5200. This gives you a lot of extra camera for the buck. Now, um, shutter rated to 150,000 actuations, which you would expect from a camera that's weather sealed and built like a tank. Uh, some of the other big pro features you're gonna have, you get a 1 8,000th of a second max shutter speed, you get a flash sync of 2 50th of a second. It's really the best that any camera like this is going to offer. Now for HDR enthusiasts, you get five frames of shooting, you know, not quite as good as the seven or nine that some cameras have, but a five is really the most I've ever gone to in almost every situation. So it should satisfy most people. Uh, I'm glad we don't have three. Three is pretty limiting. I find a lot of reasons to get to five, not a lot of reasons to get to seven or higher on that. So as far as the body, it's very similar to the D7000. A couple features from the D600 kind of intertwined in that. The size is about the same. I heard Nikon claiming less, but on the spec sheet I found it was actually 8 grams heavier than what we saw on the D7000. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but relatively the same size. Um, you get a little bit nicer grip is what I'm told from people who have had their hands on with this camera. And so that's great. Now, uh, you do get two SD slots, which is inherited from the D7000. Uh, take note, Canon. I better see this on every Canon camera from now on. 
I'm glad to see that on the Nikon. They've kept it from the D7000. Same battery, EL15. Uh, looks like it's rated a little bit higher, about 950 pictures. So you might be uh, seeing something a little bit better from that. Same battery. Uh, you can also customize the OK button now, something that I was missing a lot on the D600 to zoom in to a point in the frame at whatever the zoom function is. Something you see on pro cameras, I missed it on the D600. Nice to see it on the D5100. And by golly, the price, $1199 starting. This is unbelievable. It's one of the first cameras we've seen in recent time that has been much better than its predecessor without inheriting a much higher price. Uh, good job Nikon for doing this. I hope some of the other brands like Canon warm up to this fact and can deliver some new features for the same price. Uh, also, let's go into some of the advantages with this camera versus some of the other cameras on the market. One is uh, a good thing for video shooters. We do have a headphone in addition to the mic jack. So that's a, a big one. Some of the Canon cameras don't have that. Some of the other Nikon cameras don't have that. So headphone is big. Um, now, honestly, on the Nikon cameras, we haven't seen the kind of manual audio recording that we've seen on some of the Canons. So, uh, you know, the Canon 7D doesn't have a lot of those features on it, doesn't have a headphone out, but it might be redesigned later this year. Uh, we might be seeing a 70D from Canon, something higher than the 60D, which might give us some of those features. Who knows? For now in the Canon, you got to get something like the 5D3 to get some of those features on that. Um, Another big one is that crop mode. It can also be used in photos, so you can really extend your lenses on that. Uh, take some of the long lenses and make them even further. A uh, big advantage this has is you're actually uh, shooting only the center part of the frame. So your focus points when you're in those modes are gonna extend all the way out to the sides of the frame. Sports mode shooters are gonna love this. You're gonna get much further reach. Uh, focus points all the way to the end of the frame shooting on something like this. And you're going to see a little reduction in quality, a little reduction in megapixels down to a, a, about 15 in the, um, in the highest crop mode on that. But you're going to gain an extra frame per second. We're looking at seven frames a second shooting in this mode. So that's a big add-on for that. Now you do have 51 point AF system. This is inherited basically from the 300S and uh, with some tweaks in it. Canon says it's, or Nikon says it's using the algorithms from the Nikon D4. So you're gonna be seeing a little bit faster focusing, uh, 15 cross type focus points. Now the only thing I have a hit on this for is that Nikon does cluster all 15 of those in the center. Nothing is off to the side of the frame like we saw in the uh, 5D Mark III, like is rumored to be seen on the new 7D. Um, so, but other cameras like the 60, for example, only have one cross type and it's only in the center. So this is way better than a system just like that. Canon 7D is kind of floating in the middle. It only has 19 points, but they're all cross type and they're all kind of spread out to the frame. So, you know, play around with those, uh, both have its advantages and disadvantages to that. I like to stick with the cross type focus points. I feel like I can rely on them much more than the other ones. But you know, if you're tracking something throughout the frame, you're gonna appreciate the fact that there's just more points and that they're spread out throughout the frame, even if they're uh, not cross type focus points. Now, the new screen, this is big. It's a 3.2 inch screen, and it does have an increased resolution to 1.2 million dots versus the 920,000 that we were seeing before. Uh, should look great on that. Also, you do have an LED uh, focus illuminator, so some assistance if you're ever focusing in low light. I don't use this much because it's kind of annoying if you didn't want it to go off, but when you need it, it can save you for sure. Uh, now, so here's some interesting things. No optical low pass filter on this, on the actual sensor for this. So you could be seeing some, uh, basically some more or, or some uh, pattern noise and things like that on that. We'll have to see how Nikon handles it without the filter. You, you do have a lot of megapixels, so it might not be a big deal. We are used to seeing a lot of this in video though. So without that filter, I'm really thinking that this could hurt Nikon in the video mode with seeing some of that more A. Spot white balance, a new way of manual white balancing in live view mode. You can just pick a spot that there's white in and basically white balance on that. Don't have to go through a lot of the settings for that. Front and rear IR receivers, good to see if you're using some of those optical remote triggers. Um, you can have basically a little bit easier on that and a new I button on the bottom left of this camera. And probably similar to how the Canon Q button functions, it's gonna give you quick access to some of your most used settings. 
Uh, viewfinder display is now an OLED instead of an LCD. So probably some increased um, readability on that. It should look a little bit nicer, maybe be a little bit brighter. Nothing huge, but it'll be a little bit nicer. Now, not every camera can be perfect, so let's take a look at some of the downsides. Uh, honestly, there are not a lot. Overall, this is gonna be a great camera, but here are a couple things that I noticed. One, no built-in wireless. You know, I didn't really expect it, but we did see it on some of the Canon cameras. It's a little more popular now, no GPS. Um, it's something that we're tending to see in a little bit more cameras, so, uh, it, you know, it's something we always like to see. They did introduce a new wireless module for this camera, so you can add it, but it's not built into the camera. Only USB 2.0. I'm nitpicking here. Uh, it would be nice to see 3.0, given it's widely adopted at this point in time, and it would be nice for tethering straight to a computer, things like that. Um, Here's something more. I do wish the ISO button was not where it is. It's like this in the D600 too, including the white balance button. I'm not a huge fan of that location. I would love to see it next to the shooting controls on the top of the camera. It's also combined with the zoom button. And so if you're someone who has a preview going on after every picture, you're going to accidentally probably hit the zoom button instead of the ISO button and the ISO button instead of the zoom button because uh, as soon as that preview comes on the back of the camera, that button functionality is going to switch from ISO to zoom. Um, now, uh, some of the other things are the top dial is the same locking dial as the D600. The locking mechanism for the second drive mode dial is very difficult to press, very difficult to unlock. Just a small thing here, but it's something I'd like to see improved. Now, here are the only real downsides for me. Uh, and this is a big one. You cannot change the aperture again in live view. We saw this on the Nikon D600. They're bringing it to this. I don't know why. This means for all of you who shoot in live view mode, you got to switch now to your regular photography mode, uh, change the aperture, and then switch back into live view, and then look at your image, and switch back into picture before you can even get your settings right. If you're shooting video, it's even worse. You're going to have to toggle back and forth and back and forth. Um, just to be able to get your exposure correct. Big, big deal for me. Uh, I really had such a frustrating time with the D600 when shooting video. I hardly use it for video now, and I use my Canons for that just because it is so frustrating to use for video with that aperture. Um, I, I really can't stand why they keep doing this for that. It really is a big deal for me on that. But, it, you know, it's really the only thing that's horrible in this camera, so... Uh, keep that in mind, and it's really going to only affect those who love live view and those who love movie mode. Um, <clears throat> now, we're still waiting to get our hands on this camera. At $1,199, this is an awesome camera. Almost everything about it is great. We did hear rumors of them fixing that aperture issue in the D600 in a firmware update. Maybe that kind of functionality will come to this. Um, although the fact that it's in this too kind of leads me to believe that maybe it won't be in either camera. But we'll just have to wait on seeing that. That's really the big negative. Everything on this camera looks unbelievable. Really looking forward to get my hands on this camera. At $1,199, this is going to be tough to beat.